Okay, so you decided to take physics. It can get really tough in here, so we're going to try and help you out. Here, come up this way. Here we are, for a little reference. Well, wait, 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 no, 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 not, not him, that's Macwo. We don't, we don't really care about him. But these two, the short one and the tall one, that's the ones we care about. Anyways, I'm Mia, your new favorite voice. And I'm Devin, a.k.a. Shaq, a.k.a. the actual best voice of this entire video. Whatever, you know I'm your favorite. Well, anyways, we're going to talk to you about whiteboarding. The four models, or four main goals, of whiteboarding that should be achieved after a lab. Okay, get ready to start taking notes, because this is where our example starts. It's going to be just like one of your labs, so you'll probably want to take it down. Okay, you can see that we've got two cars, car A and car B, with a meter stick in between them to measure their distance traveled and position. For the experiment, you'll let the cars run for 60 seconds, stop them, then mark down their position. Let's say that car A moves 4 centimeters while car B moves 2. The first thing you should do is graph. For any lab, collect your data and then start off by making a graph. A visual is an amazing way to start. Here, we're going to plot position versus time, considering that those are two variables that we tested. This red line represents car A, while the next line represents car B. Hmm, what's our data trying to tell us? Let's move on and see if another kind of visual aid can help our understanding. Okay, now you have to deal with diagrams. For this experiment, we're going to use a motion map to help us find the speed or velocity for each of our cars based on their respective position and time. Just for future reference, the difference between graphs and diagrams is that graphs are usually used to present time series data and frequency distribution, while diagrams are useful in presenting geographical or spatial series. No need to make it so complicated, Mia. Basically, diagrams serve as a scientific visual for what's actually happening in your experiment. Psh, okay, but check out how constant their lines are staying. Let's move on to the written description to help us understand what all this means. The written description is where you analyze and interpret everything that's happened in your lab. Then we write close to a paragraph, explaining any new concepts that we've gained and give explanation for the findings of our experiment. Our experiment was all about observing and understanding constant velocity. Okay, our final step is to make a mathematical model. We're almost done. The mathematical model is going to be a description of our system using mathematical concepts and language. Here, we're going to stop thinking so analytically and start thinking more mathematically. So pull out all those formulas and rules you've learned over the years and apply them here. Don't forget about the 5% rule, where if the y-intercept is less than 5% of the largest y-value, then it can be made zero. Just a few tips while I'm writing this all down. You're going to always want to write in dark colors, and usually a large print, very legible so it can be seen from the back of the class. If in doubt, or if you have more time, extra images are always good. Be sure to dazzle the class, because the winner will get extra credit on their labs. Okay. Who's been paying attention? Pop quiz time! What are the four types of mathematical models? And our last question is going to be kind of open-ended. Other than what we've said, what are a few more ways you can think of to make the best possible whiteboard?